Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of TA with MK. My name is McKay. Today's video, we're just going to kind of give you an update, basically from the video that I made a few days ago about this potential altcoin season, kind of what I need to see happen for that to kind of kick off, or at least to give us a signal or a sign that that's about to happen, something that I still believe, based on the charts, should be around the corner. Um, it hasn't happened yet, and it may be just a little bit before it does. Bitcoin needs to do this for the altcoins to do this, kind of a scenario like that. I'll explain that in today's video. We'll also give you a sneak peek to my number two out of my top 10 coins that I that I think are the best coins to accumulate during this bear market. The first coin that we did the other day was Veracity or VRA. Um, today's video, I'm just going to give you a sneak peek into the second coin, and then in the next day or two, I'll put out a full-length video about that coin. Also wanted to quickly mention the giveaway that we have going on this week with our partner, which is BitGet to the Crypto Exchange. Um, there will be a link in the description to create an account. I'm going to go ahead and roll the plug that I've created for that. Now, I'm going to extend the end date to this. Um, our BitGet partner was actually out of the country for a few days on business so he's been a little behind on kind of getting some of this set up for me I do apologize however I guess for those of you that haven't entered yet it just gives you more opportunity to do that so you'll see in the plug kind of when the new end date is go ahead and roll it yes that is correct my friends we are doing our second giveaway on the channel since our recent partnership with the crypto exchange known as BitGet. this one's gonna be pretty simple there are two rules rule number one you need to use the link in my description to create a BitGet account for those of you that have done this in the past no need to do it again you're already halfway qualified for this giveaway. Number two, you're gonna upload $500 to that account. You don't necessarily need to trade with it right away. You just need to upload it to the account. And between setting up the account using my link and adding the $500, you will qualify for the giveaway. Then on Wednesday, March 22nd, I'm going to be drawing five winners that qualified uh, by following the rules that I just previously mentioned using the link in the description as well as uploading $500. And those five winners are each going to get 50 USDT added straight to their BitGet account that they can then use to start trading with. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you's support. Good Good luck and thank you BitGet. Now if those couple of things sound interesting to you, please remember to like and subscribe and let's go. It's TA with MK. It's TA with MK. All right, so the first place that I actually want to start, which I'm going to make a full-length video about this actually this coming Sunday, but I see a lot of people on Twitter and other YouTubers mentioning that this kind of rally that we're a part of right now reminds a lot of people of kind of this rally that we had back in 2019, kind of the, mar the months of March through like June of 2019, similar time frame to kind of what we're seeing right now, obviously. Uh, from a you know from the month perspective, but there's some other reasons that people are saying that, and I myself am kind of on that same I guess bandwagon so to speak. And even if this ultimately is more than just a rally, maybe it's the beginning of a bull market. Even though I don't personally believe that it is, at the end of the day, that's really not what's important to me. What's important to me is that you know is the rally going to continue? Are we going to get the altcoin season and so on? But before we talked about that, I just wanted to give you a few reasons on this chart or at least one main reason as to why I personally think it could be compared to that rally that happened uh, back in the kind of spring and summer, early summer of 2019. Now, the first and most obvious reason you would compare it to it is you had kind of the blow off top in December or early January of 2017 going into 2018. Price action from that point to its bottom dropped nearly 80, almost 85%. Uh, you look over here to this current bull market uh, from top to where the bottom was. Now, it wasn't 85%, but that being said, it was obviously amidst a huge pullback of nearly 80%. So, I mean, that's kind of like apples to oranges. It really isn't that big of a difference. They're both still fruit. In this case, they're both still a large pullback. Now, in both cases, while they may look a little different, they both spent some time kind of at their lows. You know, in this case, you had basically, you know, four or five months down here. Um, this most recent I guess bear market we spent more like six down there you know before we even capitulated a little bit further and found our uh, our low our current low at least at around 15,500 but the biggest takeaway and this is something I spoke about you know in videos months and months and months ago as I kind of talked about bigger picture kind of when I expected a potential rally to happen and one of the things that we want that we pointed out and we'll point out again in this video is if you take the time we're talking time as in amount of days 
from this big green candle which represented the blow off top that we just talked about from the end of 2017 early 2018 until the beginning of the rally that happened in the middle of the bear market you basically had right around 486 days right something right in there at least um you know you could technically say the rally started here at about 455 uh, you could say the big huge candle happened at 516 but we'll just kind of put it right here at about 486 and then if you take another date line and go to the top of this last bull market high which is this green candle up here right that happened in october of 2021 um, and we go from that to kind of where this rally began, you're looking at about 457 days. Again, like I said, if you drag this one back really to this candle here, which is kind of the first upside candle after some sideways, very similar amount of days, 455, 457, right? So from a time perspective, from when we had this little bear market rally in 2019, like we just talked about, you know, here we are potentially having another, you know, middle of the bear market rally. Now, I mostly just wanted to point that out because I kind of find it fascinating. Really, I don't know that you can make any other correlations between the two. Now, and the reason I say that actually is because this rally back here from bottom to where it topped out in the middle of that bear market was like a 381% rally. Now, clearly, I don't believe that we're gonna have a 300 an 81% rally from our current bottom that would obviously be new all-time highs which is not what happened you could also say hey well using the fib retracement tool from that top to bottom you know is there any um i guess confluence with the fib that it hit to, that it hit before pullback there actually is in fact it pumped up to what's known as the golden pocket between the 0 0.65 and 0 0.618 before ultimately seeing a large pullback now you know, I also don't necessarily think that something like that's going to happen this go around either. Um, it's possible, but if we were to delete what I just added here and do it from this current um, bear market bottom to the top, or sorry, so the top down to the bottom. Let me get rid of this arrow so we can see a little better. That was from some other analysis. Okay, so if we go from this wick high, which was the all-time high, um, at around 67,000 down to our 15,500 low. If it were to follow something similar, you would could see over here on the right, the golden pocket this go around would be just over 47,000, almost 48, uh, between 47 and 49 thousand dollars now is that possible of course it is um, is it the most likely scenario at least in my opinion i would say no but really just the fact that we're having a rally right around the same time frame as we did last uh, bear market to me that's really the only thing i'm gathering from it and i do personally believe that we're not necessarily in a new bull market yet but i do think we are in the middle of a rally and it has legs to go higher which we'll talk about in a second and if it does i do believe that the altcoin season that we talked about could be just around the corner and there really is just two charts that i'm watching really closely um outside of the obvious which is the s p 500 but i'm not going to talk about that in today's video but i'm always watching the s p 500 because i do still believe the correlation between traditional stocks and bitcoin is strong enough that you know if traditional stocks are dumb I just think Bitcoin's going to dump as well. Maybe it doesn't happen right away or at the same time or whatever, right? But at the end of the day, I don't think we're going to see some rally um, from this point where Bitcoin goes another 40 or 50% up while stocks drop by 10%. I just, I just don't think that's in the cards, at least not in 2023 or the foreseeable future. But as far as today's video, there's really only two charts I want to talk about that I'm really paying attention to as far as when to time kind of the potential altcoin season. And this first one that I talked about in the video the other day is the Bitcoin dominance chart. Now, for those of you that are new to this chart, I'll leave a link in the description to a full length video I have out that, that, that I have on my channel, I mean, that goes completely over the ins and outs of this this chart the nuances and kind of how to understand it but just in a nutshell <clears throat> kind of a very simplest form just know that generally speaking if this is going up it's bad for altcoins um, or at least it's not great for altcoins and if it's going down that's usually good now i spoke about this the other the other day in my video about how bitcoin dominance which is the chart we're looking at this is the daily chart I've been inside of this range between this this blue zone up top and this blue zone down, uh, at the bottom basically since the end or sorry the beginning of May of 2021 it found it finds support down here anytime it's doing this that's usually kind of what we call Bitcoin season altcoins typically are either taking a hit or at least not it just means Bitcoin's outperforming them whether that's 
you know, even if Bitcoin's going down, it just means altcoins will be going down more. Or if Bitcoin's going up, Bitcoin's going up at a higher rate than the general altcoin market. And the reverse is true when it's going this way. This is usually what we call an altcoin season. It means um, altcoins outperformed Bitcoin during these large pullbacks. And as you can see, these pullbacks, since this is the daily chart, often represented several weeks. Like this one here was from um, July, uh, in middle of July of 2021. Actually, it's the end of July of 2021. Clear till September of 2021. And then this next one basically went from October through like January. So we're looking at two to three month long potential alt seasons that occurred each time the price action, the, the Bitcoin uh, dominance price action anyway, got up here in this blue zone. So really what I would be looking for and what I have been looking for is for Bitcoin dominance to find some sort of resistance in the near future, which basically would just mean Bitcoin maybe potentially kind of you know, stalls out for a bit, either consolidates, maybe goes sideways. This starts to trend back down this way and altcoins start to outperform Bitcoin, whether that happens for a few weeks, maybe we get lucky like some of these ones in the past, we get even a few months, but that's really what is, I guess, what I'm mainly looking for when I talk about this potential altcoin season. Now, I did want to point one thing out that I didn't in the video the other day, and I want to do that by going to the monthly chart so we can see a lot more uh, Bitcoin dominance. Uh, actually, let's go to the weekly chart. Sorry, there's not quite that much history. So if we go to the weekly chart, one thing I did want to point out is it's not like this range that we're in is something we have to be in forever. Now, we, going into the last bull market, now, of course, altcoins weren't as, I guess, prevalent quite yet. I mean, they were important, but clearly this last bull market, uh, altcoins just saw gains that there was never seen before. There was a lot more altcoins than there had ever been. But I wanted to point out that just as recent as January of 2021, Bitcoin dominance was up here at like 73%, which basically meant that 73% of all the money in crypto was in Bitcoin. Whereas right now, it's only 47%. So I was like 30% almost more at that time. And that was only a few years ago, right before we basically had this huge downside. This was like a ginormous... Um, altcoin season right before um, you know the big dump actually happened in May of, of 2021 which was this upside move then we kind of saw a little altcoin seasons altcoin seasons you know but I wanted to point that out just to mention that it doesn't mean just because we're at this blue zone that has been important ever since uh, May of 2021 that it has to be rejected right now so what rather could happen which wouldn't be a bad thing it would just delay my altcoin season but let's just say Bitcoin breaks 30k you know which is something that I've been entertaining the idea of happening over the next few weeks um, and going as high as 32, 35, even as high as like 36 to 38 thousand dollars. Well, if that happens, what, what would likely happen here is this is going to break this zone of resistance, which is this blue zone it's been hanging out in for a few years, and it's going to trend up this direction. Obviously, people are going to continue to FOMO into Bitcoin if Bitcoin does break 30K. I believe it's going to continue to outperform the altcoins. And really, your next level of resistance after that, which there's some confluence with, would be back here. You can kind of look back here between um, September of 2018 through like March of 2019. This was an area that used to be support before it pushed higher. Well, that area is right around where the 200 SMA sits, which currently is really close to about 53%. So if Bitcoin breaks out and goes on a crazy rally that's you know even further or more than it's already done, very, very good chance that this is area that I'm referring to um, gets broken. And then at that point, we might not see resistance clear up till about 50 to 53%. And then at that point, you know, we would look for Bitcoin to consolidate, move sideways, maybe retrace a little bit, and for altcoins to finally have their moment to shine. I just felt it was real important to point that out in today's video because clearly when I posted the video the other day, the only thing I had showing on my screen was just this area. And if you thought this was all this chart had, you'd be thinking, hey, we're at resistance. Buy every altcoin in the world. We're about to have the altcoin season. But obviously, if you scroll out and look a little bit more to the left, you can see that, you know, there's a lot of areas overhead that Bitcoin dominance could easily, you know, visit. And that would, you know, mean that Bitcoin season, so to speak, would, you know, continue on. The second chart that I'm watching really closely that's going to give me, at least in my opinion, a very good clue that the altcoin season that I'm waiting for, or at least potential altcoin season, could be ready to, 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 to take off is the Ethereum versus Bitcoin chart. For those of you that don't look or are unfamiliar with looking up a coin versus Bitcoin, let me just briefly 
explained. So normally people look up charts that are Ethereum or I mean altcoins anyway, versus like USD or USDT. So you're just looking at what it's worth versus the actual dollar. Meaning that price goes up, it just means it's worth you know that much relation in relation to the dollar bill. But uh, one thing I like looking at, especially when I suspect maybe that there's going to be a shift on the horizon between Bitcoin and, and altcoins, is a chart like this. And the reason I look at it is this chart, rather than comparing it to the dollar or, or USDT tether, it's comparing it straight to Bitcoin. And all that means is anytime you see a green candle on this chart, it means that during that time frame, which in this case, this is the weekly chart, it means that Ethereum outperformed Bitcoin. It doesn't necessarily mean that Ethereum went up. It just means that whatever Bitcoin did, Ethereum did better. So if Bitcoin retraced by 10%, it would mean Ethereum traced, retraced less than that, meaning it outperformed it. If Bitcoin went up by 10% and if this this chart prints a green candle, it means Ethereum went up more than 10%. So the reason that I like looking at it at times like this when I'm you know, looking for or trying to spot the beginning of the next altcoin season is that typically the way that this crypto market works is anytime there's big rallies, you're going to see Bitcoin be the first kind of thing that moves, right? It's the first coin, it's the daddy, it's the papa, it's the Muhammad Ali, it's the Wayne Gretzky, it's the Michael Jordan, it's all these, you know, it's it's the big papa P diddy daddy doody data, right? It is what runs this market. And I don't know what I just said, so ignore all that. But at any rate, you get what I'm trying to say is that Bitcoin drives this market. So it typically moves first, but then money will eventually flow out of Bitcoin or transition into the altcoins, which begin with their papa, the altcoin papa that is, which is Ethereum. So it really is just that simple. Right now you can see clearly that over this past week and then, you know, this previous week anyway, and this week we're printing giant red candles. What does that mean? Well, it just means that right now, Bitcoin is clearly outperforming Ethereum. It means during this crazy rally that we've been seeing over the past you know week or so, week plus, that while Bitcoin's been going to the moon, uh, Ethereum has been of course going up as well, but clearly not up at the same rate or from a percentage standpoint or a gains standpoint as Ethereum. So what I would be looking for is I could pull up this weekly chart and look for historical areas of support and resistance. And here I can see that this zone that I have marked in blue has been an area that has been resistance, resistance, support, you know, resistance after a breakdown, support all in here. It's an area, the, the closest area at this point of interest. And if Ethereum is going to continue to be outperformed by Bitcoin, where I would start looking for it to start outperforming Bitcoin would be basically somewhere down here in this blue box. Now, clearly it could go lower, it could lose that, and Bitcoin could continue to outperform it. But typically you would at least see some sort of a bounce at something like this, which is major, major weekly support and resistance. Also, you have this 200 EMA, which is the exponential moving average, which would be you know kind of in confluence should this retest. You can see that's where this bounce previously was right here on the 200 EMA before going on this major rally. So could it repeat something like that? Very, very possible. So should Bitcoin continue in the short term to outperform Ethereum? When I say short term, I mean over the next few days to few weeks, you know, could we see this retrace back into this blue zone? We definitely could. But at that point, I would start looking for bottoming patterns or some sort of a bounce out of this chart, which would tell me money or attention starting to flow out of Bitcoin and into Ethereum. And then we can look at Bitcoin dominance, look at what Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin itself is doing at that point if it's consolidating or remaining stable and if so we can say what a lot of doo doo the next altcoin season is basically beginning and to finish out today's video the coin that i wanted to give you a sneak peek to that's going to be number two on our list of 10 coins for the bear market that i find to be some of the best to accumulate is going to be oasis network the ticker or the uh, i guess the short name for it is rose i'm just here on coin gecko we're going to dive into this much much more in a video coming in the next couple of days but currently the price of it is just under six cents um, it has a market cap of around 300 million at least at the time of making this video and you know we'll go over some of this um, i just wanted to kind of point out that this is going to be the coin um, this is actually their website over here oasisprotocol.org Org. Um, you can see here it's a privacy layer uh, layer powered by Sapphire. We'll talk more about that in the coming video. And if you just look at its chart, basically it's all time high, which of course happened in this last bull run, was up at around 60 cents. 
And right now, Oasis, like many, many, many altcoins, is currently sitting at around 90% down from its all-time high. So clearly it has much, much room to move to the upside in this next bull market should it stick around. And I believe it's one of the coins that not only will stick around, but will have some tremendous upside probably even surpasses its previous all-time high again we'll talk about that in the next video but keep your eye out for that video it's oasis network ticker rose and hey would you look at that you made it to the end on your way out feel free to leave a comment and as always if you haven't already and you feel you know so kind to do so please remember to like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one it's tea.